on this computer. Is it? Good. And, uh, and now I see recording. Yep, recording and live on Facebook. We're good to go. Cool. We actually got it. Um, so I wanted to have a quick conversation with you, Keith, about, um, you know, I really value your, your expertise. And um, there's a lot of talk about uh, forbearance. You know, the, the federal government came out and said, um, you could not make your payment for a year, right? And so right. we've been advising all of our clients at the advice of you and other lenders, um, you know, don't do that. Um, speak with a professional first. So first I want to, I want to ask, you know, who are you? What's your background? So people can get an idea of, of who you are. Yeah. to talk here to, uh, to your sphere. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm Keith Collins. I run the region here for Movement Mortgage. I opened up the region in March of 2018. We, uh, we brought an East Coast company to the West Coast, and it's been pretty awesome. Um, grown, grown really quickly. I think we bring a, a different look at lending, which is awesome. Um, I've, been, I've been doing home loans and helping customers in, in Northern California here for about 15 years. So I've uh, been through a bit. Was through uh, was through 2002, 2004, and I was through 2008, 2009, and now we're going through 2020, right? So, <laughs> so you <laughs> so have good. you have my, my experience. Lessons learned in all of them, but yeah, I love it. I'm loving it. Uh, I'm loving it. Lessons learned. But a um, uh, couple of kids, man. I've been married for 16 years, all all here local, and um, I actually took my took my wife to uh, to junior prom. So we we've been we've been together for a long time. So that's uh, so family's cool. super important to me. Yeah, my wife, and it's kind of cool because I'm just, I'm spending a ton of time with them right now. <laughs> which is awesome my, yeah. my wife posted in a story this morning a picture of us when we, when we were in first grade um in a yearbook so that that's so cool that you took her to the prom and uh, my wife and i met each other in first grade and then disconnected and then reconnected so um that's that's very cool it's, it's cool. like first the loves, stories, right? yeah, the stories that create <laughs> us and, and and shape us it's fun love it so forbearance what is it um you know, kind of, kind of just give us an yeah. overview of what forbearance is in the event you can't make your payment. So I think, I think forbearance is something that is, is truly for those who need it most. And uh, the unfortunate nature of forbearance is really what um, that, that I think that, in, and I'll, I'll explain it, but this, this comment may be slightly negative, the ease at which the government's made it uh, to acquire and how much the media is proclaiming this thing is a save all for everybody. Um, I heard a stat, it was not last week, but the week before, Bank of America had 150,000 phone calls in one day about forbearance. Wow. And um, the concern that I have and the industry has from a forbearance standpoint is that, unfortunately, um, often our customers don't read all of the documents, right? Because these documents, specifically in California, are very long, they're very litigious, sometimes they're hard to read. And uh, we're worried that people are going to be getting into this, not really understanding what they're getting into and really just going in under the idea that, hey, we don't have to make a mortgage payment. And so I think one of the big things that everybody needs to understand that is forbearance is not forgiveness. Forbearance is not forgiveness, it's not deferment, it's not modification, it's forbearance. And forbearance, all that means is we're pausing for a period of time and then payments will, be half, will, will have to be made up at a later date. The question is, is what, well, what does that look like? Mm. And so that's where, just like right off the bat, I would tell people like, read the documents, thoroughly. And if you don't understand them, get advice from somebody you trust. Um, even if you have to write a $200 check to a real estate attorney to read it, like that's a lot more important than potentially putting your, yourself in a place where you're facing default later. So what we're seeing often on these, on these uh, forbearance agreements is that let's just say, you know, April 1, I don't have to make my $2,000 mortgage payment. That sounds cool. May, May, May 1, I don't have to do it. June 1, I don't have to do it. And then all of a sudden, July 1, I have to make an $8,000 payment, which is my July normal payment, and then the previous three payments that I skipped. And clients mm. are saying, well, I don't. I, uh, how am I going to make an $8,000 payment? That's forbearance. So at that point in time, you're going to have to negotiate with lenders. Some might modify terms. They might work with you. They might spread it over a 12-month period of time, but that's still a $1,000 increase in your mortgage payment. So that's where like forbearance again is for those who need it most it's not for everybody and i guess if there's one thing like read the documents and call the 800 number like i think people are thinking you know they're getting letters in the mail here they're saying hey you don't have to make your mortgage payment like that's not a gift pay attention to the documentation make a phone call i spoke to another person a uh, person the other day and they, they said well it's like a two-hour wait and i'm like wait 
Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. The two, wait the two hours because we're talking about potentially a position where it might feel great over the next 90 days, but in, but in, but in that fifth month, it might be pretty painful again and maybe worse than where you're at right now. Hmm. So does, is there any specific guidelines that you're aware of? Um, and I guess the question is, each lender is going to have their own process for forbearance and their willingness to provide it, right? Yeah, so there's a component of the CARES Act, which is really what this is, that $2.2 trillion yep. dollar package that was put together, the CARES Act. The component of the CARES Act is almost forcing lenders to do this, mm -hmm. right? So, so lenders don't, don't necessarily have an option to say no. And um, the guidelines under which someone qualifies for this are extremely loose. It's basically, have you been affected by COVID-19? And I mean, there's an argument to say that we all have. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm working from home right now right? I've been impacted. So there isn't a whole lot. And then at the nature at which people are calling, um, they, people don't, companies don't have the capacity to vet it out in that way. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. So, so it, it's really, really easy to get. I'm being told that people are actually just getting letters in the mail saying, we put you in forbearance. And they're like, what? Yeah. You, they're you know, actually or, just or, pausing or, mortgage payments. Just, yeah. They're just, yeah. Doing, and it's like, and so, so then it's also, it's like, okay, is that how much of that is solicitation for some reason? And how much of that is your actual lender doing that? Because on the back end of this, lenders don't want this. It's actually going to put a lot of financial strain on lenders. Aside from, and I, and I don't say that to say like, don't get a forbearance because you're worried about lenders. I, 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 but like, my point in that is lenders don't want this. This puts financial strain on lenders, the big, the banks, the institutions, the servicers. Mm -hmm. um, so they're not, they're not like wanting to do this, but they have to do this associated with the CARES Act. Um, every lender is going to look at it a little bit differently because there isn't a ton of clear guidance. Got it. Um, but for the most part, it's a pause in mortgage payments. It's all it yep. is. It's not forgiveness. It's not deferment. It's not modification. It's a pause. And then the other thing that we don't have yet, which we're hoping to get next week, is you know Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have not told us how they're going to look at requalifying somebody who went into forbearance. Hmm. Credit wise, That's you a mean? Big unknown right now. Like what? 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 Credit wise, you mean? Like Credit what? wise, yeah. yeah. So exactly. if you need like, to refinance and, and lower your payment to hopefully save money monthly if your income goes down, um, having forbearance may el eliminate the ability to do that. We just don't know yet. We just, we just don't know yet. There isn't, there isn't anything. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHAVA don't have a forbearance guideline. They've mm. got a modification guideline. They've got a short sale guideline. They've got a foreclosure guideline. They don't have a forbearance guideline. And so um, we're waiting for those updates. So we don't know that if, and I don't say that to scare people, but that's one of the big unknowns is, you know, okay, you're, you're thinking about doing a forbearance right now, but you thought about maybe buying a house in a year. Yeah. We, we don't have guidance on how lenders are going to look at the ability to qualify somebody in a, you know, a year after forbearance. Interesting. So that's so, going to be a really important piece. What other options are there, right? And obviously use your best judgment. Um, what sure. other options are there if, you were to lose your job or your income goes down and you feel like it's not temporary, um, you could still afford your mortgage, you know, your mortgage payment, but it's going to make it tight. Um, is a modification an option uh, rather than forbearance where you know you're going to have to pay it back right away? Um, like what options are there other than forbearance? Sure. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's where we call the lender, right? But there's an 800 number on your mortgage statement. You call the lender and, and, and they have a whole division for this, uh, yeah. for, for hardship. They do yeah. that. Every lender has it. And, um, quite frankly, those, those divisions are getting hammered right now with phone calls. So the, the time in which it's going to take to get answers is going to be a lot longer. Mm -hmm. But I guess the, the point is, is to wait the time to understand, but, but modification absolutely is an option. Um, deferment is an option. And forbearance is an option. Forbearance is really the easy option um, because it's the one that like lenders kind of have to do for people. Um, I'm, again, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Just understand what it is. You know, um, um, if you're going into a forbearance agreement and it's a little tight, but you could swing the mortgage payment, like, and you go into more, a forbearance, like, hold on to the mortgage payment if you can and keep it in savings. Don't spend it. You know, maybe because if you have to catch back up later, at least you have maybe some of those funds or, um, you know if the lender comes to you and says, okay, cool, we'll, we'll actually spread out that you know, $8,000 installment that's now due over a 12 month period of time. Well, if you have 4,000 of it, maybe you can give it to the lender, right? To at least spread that out a little less and have that impact be not as great. Um, and then really explore unemployment. I mean, if, you are, if you've been laid off, you should be able to claim unemployment and the unemployment packages that have been put together are, 
I mean, relative to unemployment, pretty healthy. I mean, it's an yeah. extra $600 a month tax-free, $600 a week for the next 36 weeks tax-free from, from, from the federal government. And then you also have state unemployment. So, um, which should help uh, a lot of the people. And I, I did see someone, um, I don't know where I saw it, but they suggested, hey, your mortgage payment is the one thing that you don't want um, to defer right now anyways. So start with your car, your credit cards. Those are super easy. I called all of my, um, the people that I have subscriptions with to run our business and my personal life and said, hey, um, I'm anticipating that we're gonna have challenges. What options will you give me, right? Many of right. them will cut your costs 50%. Start with cuts first. Like, hey, right. will you give me a 50% discount this month? And then start working your way to, you know, I, I would think the mortgage is the last case scenario because you're going to have to repay it at some point. You just don't want to get stuck three months down the road making and a I think balloon that, payment. Yeah. And the other thing is too, is I mean, a lot of people have a significant amount of wealth in their house and you don't want to put yourself in a position where you, you potentially lose that through, through default and foreclosure. Yeah. Um, you know, so just be aware of, of, of everything. And so, yeah, letting go and, or, or negotiating other things. I mean, we have USA, which is awesome. I mean, USA just, came, you know, it's interesting. No one, my wife and I were talking about this last night. So USAA, they actually across the board cut a lot of the costs like uh, our, our, our ins homeowners insurance and auto insurance costs by 20% because wow. they don't have as many claims. So, huh. So they just looked at their, their numbers and said, hey, let's just reduce costs by 20% to all of our customers because people aren't driving cars right now and we're not doing auto, auto claims. Yeah, that makes you sense. Know? So, it's, you know, so, so that, your, your point is, I guess, very, very valid there that like, yeah, look at other stuff. The mortgage should be the last thing that we let, we stop making payments on. Right. Um, in my opinion. So, and I'll, I'll pivot a little bit. I just, I thought that's great information. I want to keep it short yeah. and sweet. There's a lot of people asking about forbearance and what do I do? Because we're starting now uh, to hear more and more, uh, um, I would call them furloughs, temporary furloughs, not right. job losses. Um, and, and so I anticipate that to keep happening for the next you know, month or so. So who, what can those people do right now? And I think the, the key is, like you said, you got to wait. You got to wait on hold. Um, I call my business bank with B of A. It was a two hour wait. I mean, it was ridiculous, you know, but you have to wait, you have to wait and, and get the right information. Cause if you make the wrong move and you just stop making your payment, it, it could be, it could be devastating two or three months from now. If a balloon payment is due, you need to understand, right? You have to fully understand what the rules are. I think, I think that's the other thing too, is <clears throat> forbearance is something you have to enter into. It's not something that's automatically granted. Ah, so people can't yeah. just stop making mortgage payments right now. Like that's not a thing. You stop <laughs> making a mortgage payment, you're going to lay down your credit and then you start yep. going into default. Can't do that. It's an agreement that you have to enter into. There will be documents to sign. Got it. I think that's yeah. a key point. Yes. Do not just yeah. stop making your mortgage payment. Just because the right. president says it on TV doesn't mean everyone can stop making their mortgage payment, right? Yes, absolutely. So, and then we'll wrap up just a quick, you know, a couple minutes on, um, you know, I'm a, I'm, I was, uh, made the decision to buy a home and I'm still in this marketplace. Uh, I want to buy a house still. Um, what advice would you give to a first time home buyer or someone who's going out now into this environment to buy a house, um, in, in regards to the lending side of the business? Um, you know, obviously keep it within your best judgment, but Sure. You know, what advice would you give people? Because everything's changing consistently, right? Yeah, I mean, that's it's like we're getting that question a lot. So I think two things: one, people are like, should I buy right now? Well, assess your personal financial situation. Do you have margin in your life? Do you have a very secure job? Um, yep. You know, uh, if 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 it's two income household and you lose one of the incomes, like how how, how are you guys going to do? Like, I mean, those are legitimate questions right now because we have seventeen million in unemployment claims in a three-week period of time. So. Really look at your finances, get a good, a good budget put together as you always should. But, but I think now more than ever is important to identify if you have margin in your finances. Um, in terms of loan options, you know, we're, we're, the mortgage industry is and, and it's a good analogy. I think it is like, you know, when you go into hypothermia, right, your, your body basically pulls all the energy from your extremities. It takes stuff out of your hands and, and, your, and your feet and your legs and it comes to your core. And so what a lot of lenders are doing is we're kind of in a place where it's hard to navigate right now. And so we're just retracting to our core. And so a lot of the ancillary products have been paused, not, 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 not eliminated, just paused, right? So a lot of the lenders have paused on down payment assistance. 
Um, a lot of lenders have paused on jumbo financing. A lot of lenders have paused on low credit score programs. This is not an elimination of those programs, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, VA, to this date, haven't changed one guideline associated with credit scores. It's just lenders are kind of retracting to their core right now. So, um, it, you know, if you are doing a jumbo home loan, if you're doing down payment assistance, if you have a lower credit score, maintain good contact with your lender to identify, like even weekly or before you're writing an offer, program still available yep. um, would, be a, would be a fair, a fair thing to do. Um, if you haven't talked to your lender in, you know, two, three, four weeks and you start looking at houses again, Talk to your lender. Just get that updated. Um, I mean, I think most clients, when they're writing offers, should be reaching out to the lender to identify what the payments are. And the lender at that point in time has the opportunity to let you know if the program is still available. We haven't seen programs, a lot of programs being pulled midstream. So that I don't necessarily know if that's like a fear um, that, that people should have. Like, am I going to get in contract? And then am I going to have, you know, issues mid, mid contract? And then really the other one that's, that's you know, you could talk to it too is more so contingencies in COVID because, you know, we've had people day before, two days before a close of escrow lose their job. Yep. And, you know, we can't do a loan at that point in time. And so, you know, what does the customer do at that? But, but we have the real estate agent and the contract to fall back on from some protection standpoint. Um, so I, I would just say close communication with your lending partner now more than ever, just to make sure for writing an offer program still available. Got it. And, and in preparation for that, there are um, this, you know, I'm not sure on this, but um, will reserves become important for some of those uh, loan programs? So if they're saving up for a home, maybe in, in the summertime or, or late uh, fall, just make sure you have a, a few months of reserves um, in case they change some of those, those guidelines. And that's important. Yeah, I, absolutely. So reserves is the ability to make a mortgage payment for a period of time. So if your mortgage payment is $2,000 and you had $4,000 in savings after the close of escrow, you got two months in reserves. Got it. So lenders, so lenders look at uh, lenders look at the ability reserves as a as a strengthening factor on a loan. Like maybe they'll go more aggressive to a customer if they're reserved. So we actually are seeing some lenders say, "Okay, um, we'll, we're not going to lend this way unless someone has six or twelve months reserves." Got so it. so reserves are very important right now. But a lot of the a lot of the programs are very much lender lender specific. But um, yeah, so yeah, definitely it. save. And, and, and maybe a lender will say, hey, okay, we're going to put 10% down, but because of program changes, let's do five so that we can keep five, five, that 5% five in reserve so that we can still qualify for the program. Got like, it. Those are different things to look at right now. And, and <clears throat> from 2009, you know, 2008, 2009, um, lenders got rid of a lot of the ancillary programs. And then they slowly started coming back, right? Like mm -hmm. slowly. And then we got to kind of where we were, where it wasn't, you know, just wild, crazy programs. You still had to qualify for stuff, but we started getting the jumbo stuff and the stated income and things like that. It's going to happen again. Lenders have contracted. We're going to gain, gain some stability. And then those programs will start coming back over time. Yeah. That's interesting. I watched a, uh, um, uh, interview of Ray Dalio. It was an hour long interview and he talked to that very specific thing about not just mortgages, but the entire economy as a whole, um, it's just kind of like a restructuring. It's like a natural evolution, right? So yep. I think the key points of this quick talk that I wanted to give people was what is forbearance? What do you do about it? What are the ramifications? You answered all of that. Thank you. And then, you know, if you are interested in buying a home, which there's still a lot of people buying houses, um, you know, I think the key is just be in constant communication with your, your lender um, because, uh, you know, things, things are changing, especially if you got pre-approved like three or four months ago and you're jumping back into the market. hundred percent. And there are cool. people, I mean, we, we've had it where they got in a contract and they told us, you know, I, I don't think we would have gotten a house if it wasn't for what's going on right now, just because we've had some, 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 some lower competition. 100%. We, we're we're seeing that too, for sure. Yeah. We are most definitely seeing that, that um, there are less people in the marketplace, buyers in the marketplace. So it's making it less competitive for sure. You know, yep. so Hey, I appreciate cool. your time. Let me know Thanks, if there's man. anything that we can do for you. Cool. All right. I appreciate All right. it. Thank you so much. Thanks. No way. Un so canceled it. I did. Looks like it's and still recording.